Quickly now, we want to go to the real gist of this program. And I'll be calling on Mr. Ademola Adede, the facilitator, the initiator of this program, for the standout talk. Standout talk. It will be very interesting. So I want you to open your mind. It will be very interactive because we'll be having slides. So open your minds as it takes you through the world of how you stand out in life. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Ademola Adedeji as he comes out. Thank you. So once again, thank you for your time. I wouldn't know if I've met some of you before. Baptist, uh, Zion Baptist High School. Zion Baptist High School. Let me see your hands. If you are in my presentation of your school, let me see your hand. You are there. You are not there. There's a culture, there's a tradition we have, which at the beginning of this uh, introduction, I forgot to follow through. And that is the culture of appreciation. In life, I believe that none of us is standing on his own. You agree with me that you are privileged to be a student in the university, I mean, in the secondary school where you are. There are many of your mates out there that not that they don't want to go to school, but somehow they don't have what it takes to be in school. So I'd like you to follow the tradition. Let's stand to our feet in appreciation that you are standing, the, our senior guest is not compulsory that she must, he must stand up. It's what I do with the children. So if you feel like standing, you can. So in appreciation to the God that has given you the life that you have in you, I'd like you to put your hands together. Thank you. I also believe that the school which you attend there are someone that you know as a set man. You can call him the proprietor, you can call him the visitor, the owner of the school. The fellow had a vision, and you have, you've plugged into that vision. If he has not followed through with his vision, maybe, maybe, you won't have the opportunity of going to a good, a good school which you are in now. I'd like you to put your hands together in the appreciation of the owner of your school. There are some parents out there that they have the money, but they don't value education. But your own parents value education. They do all they could to ensure that you are in school at the right time. They pay your school fees. They ensure you are, you are well clothed. They feed you. They do all the necessary things. Put your hands together for your parents, even though they are not here. They are... Thank you. And it's not enough to have your parents paying the school, um, paying your school fees. What of if the teachers are not there? Or if they are there, they are neglecting their duties. Or even if they are doing it, but they are not giving you their best. There's no way you can become someone that the world will, will await or will celebrate. I'd like you to appreciate your teachers. Some of them are here. They will hear about it. They will see it in the news. Just appreciate them. And we have a saying. We have a saying where I come from. That if you don't appreciate me, if you don't praise me, I will praise myself. So, even if I don't ask you, to, if, if, if nobody praises you, I'd like you to appreciate yourself. That you are a law-abiding child, you are a good student. So, let's have our seats. Thank you for that conduct and the attitude of appreciation. Today, we talk about standouts. We talk about standouts. I'm moving to the next slide. You want to ask, why do I need to stand out? Next slide. That's the question. Why do I need to stand out? One of the things I need to say is that as we move on to the next slide, you need to stand out because the world awaits you. The world awaits you. Look at the picture we have here. I'm trying to move fast because we don't have much time to spend here. You can see the picture of the great challenge that Europe is facing now. That is migration. You can see child labor. You can see it's children that have suddenly become an adult, and you can see the yearning of the world crying for your help. Where we are today in the world, the world globally and as a nation, whatever we are fa facing as, as crisis, there are problems of leadership. There are problems of leadership. And as you, either you believe it or not, at every phase, people will come, live their time, and they will go. And another generation will come and take over. So in other words, the world is waiting for a leader that will make the world to be a better place for them to live. And if I should ask you, 
who is that best leader that the world is waiting, is awaiting? I would say you have a better chance than people like us. Because you have a long time to aspire to be someone that will make a great impact, that will make the world a better place to live. So the world is awaiting you, and for that reason, you should stand out. Move the, next, move the, uh, the slide to the next one. Then you now ask, what should I do to stand out? What should I do to stand out? Let me first ask, I mean, answer the question what it means to stand out. To stand out means to be separate from the crowd. It means to choose to be different. It means to follow a path that may not be common, but because you have a vision. You have a vision. And the vision is, time will not permit me to begin to move around the student that I used to do normally. But the vision is, what do you want to become in the future? Who do you aspire to be? You agree with me that everyone that we see as leaders today, they were once a child like you. But we shock you that some of those people in position of leadership now, there are many of them that right from childhood, they had a vision in their heart that they want to be someone. I could tell you the story of the late Obafemi Aulaw. At a point in his life, he had it in his mind that he want to become a political leader, want to become a lawyer, and he want to become someone that we have a social resp uh, relevant in his community, in his world. And at a point in his life, the money was not there. And I could remember there was a time that in attempting to study in the UK, he had to do a letter to a, 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 uh, shall I say a, a rich man in his time that, please, and he, he spread it out, loan me so, so money when I come back, I'm going to pay it because I know on my return, I'll be occupying big and specific positions in life. So the reason why you need to, I mean, what, I mean, why you need to stand out, and the reason, one of the reasons is that one one of the things you need to do to stand out is that you have a vision for your life. I discovered one thing that if you want to aim at something, if you are aiming at something, no matter what obstacle come your way, you will drive yourself to ensure that your hand reaches it. Do you agree with me? But vision is not enough because along the line there will be a lot of things that will distract you. You need to be focused. And it is only focus that makes you to outlive every form of distraction. Let's move to the next slide. The next thing you should do is, what should I do to become, I mean, what, 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 what do I need to do to stand out? One of the things you need to do is, you have to become a library rat. You have to become a library rat. I discovered that if you are a reader, we, we know what people say. A reader will be what? A reader is what? A leader. I'm telling you, if you are talking of standing out, you can't break yourself away from reading. You can't. We have our brother here today who represents the vice chancellor. He's a director in this institution. We have here the representative of the office of the director of SG. Ask them questions. They will tell you that there are people that are men or women that we can call library rats. A library rat is someone that visits the library. A library rat is someone that takes his reading seriously. A library rat is someone that does not separate himself from the book. From book. What makes you a library rat is it's not just enough for you to attend the classes, to attend your lecture. You are not the one that you take notes and you bury it in the time when they announce the exam and the examination for you. No. When you go to the class, you pay attention to your teachers, you take down your notes, you don't, just stop, you don't just stop at taking down your notes, you revisit them from time to time. And beyond what your teacher has given you, you go into books. And interestingly, I and uh, Mr. Modebe, we've been privileged to visit some of the schools around. And we realize that there are many schools, including so many private schools, that don't even have the library. So even when the students finish the class uh, lectures, there's no library to visit. But yet, as parents, and that's why most of them are not anywhere we go, we always advise that they should allow parents and teachers to be around. We can create mini library for our children. We can get books that we know are in line with their studies and encourage them that beyond what you have done in the classes, visit the books, read other texts about it. Let's move on to the next slide. So it's not enough for you to be the library rat. You also have to be a working book. 
A working book is someone that internalizes what he has read. That is, you are not just reading because you want to pass an exam. You are reading because you want to understand. And I needed to tell you that at the beginning when I was giving my welcome uh, address, I told you that in three forms, we are not only trying to redefine education, we are also trying to promote the real definition of education. And the real definition of education is a process of teaching, of training, and learning through which you improve your knowledge and through which you gain skills. So in other words, it takes you being a working book for you to be able to increase your knowledge and for you to be able to gain, I mean, to improve your skills. For what SG has done, it has to be people that are working book. They've done researches. They discovered that certain things are not working as expected. And due to their researches, they are able to find solutions to the problems that face the world. It, she made mention of the year 2014, and we all know the crisis of Ebola. Interestingly, let me tell you this story. I was in the office of Professor Happy one day when he was receiving a call from as far as the East then. And it was a crisis of Ebola, and he has told them what to do. And that's to tell you that if you are truly a working book, it doesn't matter where you are. The world will look for you because you have solution to solve the challenges and the problems that the world is facing. Let's move to the next slide. So, it is not enough for you to choose to stand out. It is not enough for you to aspire to become the leader that the world is awaiting. You must ensure that you make choice friends. It's not everybody that will be your friend if you want to go far in life. Hello, friends. Do you agree with me on that? If you want to aim for the heights as an ego, you cannot be walking the chick with chicks or chicken and you expect to fly sometime. The chick will never aim for the high. It will never aspire to fly high. But if you want to fly as ego, then be a friend with ego. In other words, you know where you are going. Let me tell you my story. At every instant, I as a secondary school student or an undergraduate, I always found myself with people of like mind and of like passion. And at the end of the day, in that my group, I finished my secondary school as the overall best student. I finished my secondary school as the well-behaved student. Why? While I was, immediately I finished my elementary school, which is the primary school, I had a brother that was already in the higher institution, and he, put, he brought all the books that he had ever used in the secondary school. He brought them to me, and he gave me an instruction, read these books. I was not yet in the secondary school, and I started reading the secondary school text. So when I got into the secondary school, my first class, the teacher introduced, and I have seen this before. So I was able to answer. I was able to say little I could, and that built my confidence as a secondary school student. It got a time that I began to get the attention of my teachers, and that also affected my conduct. So it made me to, because at times when I do something that I'm unruly, some of, some of my teachers will feel disappointed that you, a good student that is leading the class, you are misbehaving. And that made me to comport myself, even as a student. But I didn't stop at that. I also have friends that we read together. And I discovered that Mr. Akinuga is no longer on the seat. He asked a question the other time that, I mean, who knows everything? There's nobody that's an island of knowledge. There's nobody that knows everything. It will shock you that what you don't know, even as a good student, one of your friends knows it and understands it. So if you have a choice friend, if you have a good friend that is also aspiring to stand out, it will help you to achieve your vision and to be focused in your study as a student. So may I ask you, who are your friends? Who are your friends? So be careful who you work with. If you want to go far in life, look for people that are interested in reading as you are. Look for people that have it in their heart, that they too, they want to become someone that is going to lead the nation sometime. They want to become a scientist that everybody everywhere will be looking out for. They want to become a medical doctor that we provide solution to any known or no medical challenge. So you need to choose your friends. Look at that working book. Look at that 
a group of friends putting pressure on themselves because they want to gain knowledge, because they want to acquire skill. And look at that. Those are guys running. They are running because they have a vision of where they are going. So let's move to the next slide. And I said, you have to begin to look for a role model. You have to learn every day. Who can tell me the image of someone in the middle there? In the middle of that picture. Do you want to try? I've heard of the name Florence Nightingale before. Florence Nightingale. So that's Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale as a young person, even though she was born into a very a home of worthy parents, she aspired to be a nurse. At that time, be a nurse was the jobs of people that are from poor family. So her parents felt disappointed. But she said, this is what I want. And she started reading towards nursing. And eventually, she entered into the school of nursing. So later on in life, there was a great war in one old city in Turkey, then, of the whole Turkey. And that was what brought her into the limelight. The solution she provided brought about a redefinition to the profession of nursing. So today, in terms of nursing profession, Florence Nightingale is being celebrated as the, mod- of, as the mother of the modern nursing profession because she had a vision as a young person. And you can also see, that's the work of a role model, teaching the young one to attain their goal, to learn something new, that will build their skills. In three funds, one of the things we have done is that we brought an array of people that in their different career, in the academics, in the secular profession out there, some in the creative, uh, creative and entertainment industry, we brought them together and we put them on the same platform. We call them our faculty members. Why do you have to have them there? We have them there because we know there are many young people out there that need positive role models. And we did our job to choose the individual that will qualify to be our faculty members. We did, we did our job to know that these are men of integrity. These are men that have an attitude of God-fearing. These are men that they've gone through the, the, the rigor of rising to the top in their choice of career. And we feel that just little interaction is enough and it will fire you up to attain to be great and to be, to be someone that the world eventually celebrates. So, for someone in the house that wants to be a medical doctor, for example, one of the things you need to do is interact with your parents. They can tell you someone that is a successful medical doctor that you can begin to read about. What that will do for you is that as you begin to read about that individual, even if you don't have an opportunity to meet them one-on-one, it will begin to, re- to remind you of that vision. And that will give you the driving force to begin to disregard every form of distraction that may come your way. And be open to something new. Be someone that is willing to learn, even from your mates. As you move around, don't just look. Also, find time to discover what is happening here. Why are things this way? What can we do to make things work better? So you don't just walk around with your eyes open. Make sure that you start to observe little, little things around you. Learn something new. Don't, even though you may be the leading student in your class, open your ears at times to some of your mates. Let me give you an example. While I was doing my master at the University of Ibadan, interestingly, I was also among the good students there that other classmates will approach to say, okay, let's treat this question together, let's do this together. And studying Greek economics at that level is as good as doing economics. And one thing about economics is this. It's, it depends on how you can defend a point or a view. So if you have reasons to back them up, you can take a stand that somebody else will also have come with his reason. And the lecturer will look at the well, based on what you have said, you are good. So there was a particular question that I had a stand on it. And some of my mates, they came, explain, explain. And somebody just asked one little question. And that question changed my thought. And it, it appears to me that that question is a, is, is a strong and a more robust stand than what I was holding on to. And I dropped my initial stand, and immediately we got to the exam, that question was repeated. And I was able to answer it better than what I was holding to my heart. So please, 
Don't feel that you have known so much, you don't, you don't need to learn from anybody. You can learn from even the, that, that student that you feel is the dullest student in your class. So don't be an highland of knowledge. Let's move this slide. Please, go back. Yeah. The other time I saw Dr. Arugnade talking about focus, not be distracted. Look at this, these items. It speaks a lot of things. Give us pictures of a lot of things that distract with the young people. I know many of you, if I should begin to ask you one after the other, what games, you can tell me different games that you play on your laptop, that you play on your phone. We all pass through the stage. Some of you, you are television addicts. Some of you, even my three-year-old girl, if she handles your phone, you'll be surprised of what she can do with it. And that is what we are doing now. We visit the internet. Where do you go to? What site do you visit on the internet? And that's one of those things that we want to do on three phones. We have online platform through which we want to interact with young people. We discovered that we cannot shy away from the fact that the young people of this generation, they are high-tech guys. They are high-tech young ladies. You can't take them away from the internet. But what you need to do is that redirect their visit of the internet to the right sites. So one of the things we are doing, here, and look at this version. Don't be thinking about fashion now at this your age. If you really want to aspire to be someone great in life, leave fashion for now. Forget about pattern at this stage. There are many of you that begin to ask you the names of the hip-hop artists now. You tell me so many of them. So many of you, if you hold the parents of your phone, what you do is you download those songs that your parents even don't know that they exist on their phone. And those are the major distractions that you have. If you only focus on reading, study and interacting with the right people, seek a role model that will guide you, that will make you to follow through with your dream. I'm telling you, all this will just distract you. They will not take you anywhere. So I want to advise you, my little friends, my young friends in the house, please, don't be addicted to this. As a matter of fact, you don't need party for now. What are you celebrating when you are, still, when you are just starting your journey? So what about the games? Forget it. What about TV? Fashion? Friends, distractions. So don't be distracted. Don't let this item distract you. Let's move, the next, let's move to the next slide. There's going to be a time in your life when you need to manifest. And uh, there's a saying in computer, it's garbage in, garbage out. It is what you have inside of you that you will manifest. Your teachers, whatever they are doing, they are sowing seed into your heart. Don't let all these other things that we've mentioned earlier, don't let them pollute the good things that your, your teachers and your parents are sowing into your heart. We see our beloved um, Ogaye, Dr. Mrs. Folari. What they are turning to the world is providing solution to the great challenges, diseases in the world. It's as a sort of what they, they have built in themselves. It's as a sort of what they've exposed themselves to. We have Dr. Unabona here, we have Dr. Drugo. These are great renowned scientists that is not just, they are not just local people, they are people that the world read after. We have all of them around there. But it started from having vision, being focused, and ensuring that they are taking the right thing inside themselves. I mean, let me tell you the, the truth is that there's none of us at your head that were never distracted. But one thing is this our focus always brings us back to the line. So, my friends, a time is coming in your life that you, the world will begin to look out for you. And they want you to provide solution. They want you to help them fix a problem. You will not be able to do anything if you have not taken the right thing in. So please, face your book. Have a vision for your life. Be a walking book. As you are reading, begin to look for, oh, this is the way to, for me to follow if I want to become a doctor. This is the way for me to follow if I want to become an engineer. This is the way for me to follow if I want to become what? Who wants to become something here? So tell me what you want to become. I need somebody to talk to me. Just somebody should stand up and say something. Hello? Okay. You? Yeah. So, what would you like to become in the future? A neurosurgeon. A neurosurgeon. So look for a model and ensure you do what is needed. Let's move to that slide. So I want you to know that everyone 
that you know today as great leader, they were young people like you. So what has kept them moving forward is their vision, their focus, and having, aspiring to be so great in life. Who knows this picture? Can you try this, to identify this picture? Who's the richest man in the world today? That's, that's the picture of Bill Gates. So he was a child like you at some time. So in other words, what we are saying today is that you can become someone that the world will celebrate if you have that vision right from this age. So it's all about development. It's all about what you are adding to yourself. It's all about your focus. It's all about picking things from your parents. It's all about aspiring to be someone that you have chosen as role model. I, was, I, I put it in my welcome address that assuming our vice chancellor were to be here, Professor Adeyewa, I will tell you what he has to pass through at your age before he become a shining star today. So what we are saying in essence is that you have what it takes to become the next world, that the, the, the next leader that the world is awaiting. You have it. Everybody that is a celebrated leader today, why they were just as your, they were like you at some time. But they grew. They fight against all odds. They were never distracted. Even at some point when distraction wanted to take them with the deep find their way back. Let's move quickly. So no matter what happens, keep rising, keep climbing, keep moving. So keep doing what is ideal. Keep studying, keep reading. I'm telling you, education pays. It gives you skills. There are many things you learn when you are focused, when you are self-driven and self-determined. Let's move on. So, I want to talk about our three. Our three means the redefined education endowments. And we put there choice three, choice fruit. So, we believe that we have people that can influence your life. And interestingly, we have come together to even have an agency that is recognized by the world to take some of you through their lab, especially the science student. So that is one of the things we do to produce the choice fruit. The choice fruit are what you turn out to become in life. Choice is another word for good. It's another word for desirable. So if you want to become a good leader, you need to take in the good content. Let's move on. So I've explained what we mean. Let's move to the next stand. And these are what we do. Stand out is the harm of the three form that has organized the program that we have here, which is the Future Leader Summit. Stand out is a harm that reach out to the secondary schools. And basically what you tell the secondary school is about vision, about focus, about the reading culture, about good conduct. And we have the harm that is called the Life Ments. The life meant is life mentoring session. In the life meant, we are targeting the undergraduates, we are targeting the postgraduate students, we are targeting the young professionals. And that is the area which, we, one of the reasons why we have what we call the faculty members platform. And those are the people. In, in the month of September, we are still going to organize a program for the people of that category. And we have what we call the head knob. The head knob is to provide a platform for schools whereby they can build followership. Let the world know what they are doing in their various and their individual schools. And we have what we call the idea bank. The idea bank is to gather the young people that they feel that they have ideas to provide solutions to the, pro the world problem. But they need sponsors. And we feel that we can create a platform whereby we will link people with ideas to people that have what it takes to sponsor and to promote their ideas. And we have what we call the real jobs. The real jobs is targeting those that they think life is all about singing and dancing. And many of them, they abandon schools to go and to be singing and dancing. Recently, I was talking with one of our faculty members. And I said, one of the, the, the corporate world of this nation, they are not sincere. They are not this, this sincere in, in, in the sense that they put their money into promoting those people that will feel they are in the entertainment industry. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't have anything against them. But the question is, when their own companies face this problem, who are the people that will help them fix the problem? Is it the people that are dancing and are singing? No. There are people that are trained. People like you. There are people that they, 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 were, they were trained in the area of education. They were trained to become professionals. 
They are the ones that they'll be looking out for to say, okay, we have this problem in our organization. Please, what can you do to it? So why are they not looking in the direction of, of uh, NGOs, of organizations like ours that are trying to promote education? Why are they not thinking of programs that will inspire young people to say, okay, I want to become a reader. I want to become somebody that will be a leader in the future. I want to become somebody that will be the next medical doctor that we all be, the world will be talking about. Dancing and singing alone will not take people there. It takes bringing young people to the attention of taking their book seriously. And we are saying that read just is just to encourage those people that have such talent that even though you have it, but please, take your education serious first. So we have a platform like that that will be interacting with such young people at higher institutions in secondary school. So move to the next slide. So I have some of our faculty members in the house. I would have loved to launch to our website, but there's no problem, proper provision for that. If you are a faculty member on three phones and you are in the house, please stand up wherever, wherever you are. Faculty members, three phones, Dr. Unabuna. Dr. Unabuna. Faculty members on three phones. So we have in the house, this is Dr. Missy, I mean, <laughs> yeah, she's going to become a doctor very soon. This is Mrs. Timitokwe Worimegwe. She's a lecturer in accountancy. We have Mr. Lekulu Alogmo, in, um, remind me, political sciences. This young man here, he may affect, many of you may not know so much about him, but his name is Modebe, Emmanuel Modebe. I would love you to launch our website. I only gave him this concept. is the brain behind everything you do, see on that website. There are so many things you can learn from him on IT, computer, whatever. It's, it's loaded. We have Dr. Unabona. Just Google, Google Emmanuel Unabona. And you see a lot of things about him. We have Dr. Drugo, Dr. Ernest Drugo in the house. Google him too. You learn a lot of things about him. We have Mrs. Ibukonloa Adedeji in the house. She's an HR person. She's an administrator. But there are so many other things about her that you can only learn when you visit her site. Now, these are the people here. We have representatives in the UK that are faculty members on three funds. We have representatives in the US that are faculty members on three funds. We have people that the HR director of Restland Campina is a faculty member on three funds. And we have many other people like that. And why do you have to bring them together? Oh, Mr. Adesa are just working. He's also a faculty member on three phone. So we have so many people like that, and we say, let's brainstorm. Everywhere I go, I see someone that has the potential of becoming a faculty member on three phone. When we were launching this, we even went to the extent of reaching out to some people that are not Nigerians, and we know they're still going to come on board. There are some that, there's a guy in the UK that I've never met in my life. We only met on Facebook, and I saw the ideas, I saw what, is, what he was doing. And what is he doing? And I saw the idea of three phone to him. And when he read through the profile, he was convinced. And he came on board. So on three phones, we are saying that we have to redefine the way things are done. We have to model the future. Change don't just happen by profession or confession. Actions have to be taken to bring about the real change that we are desiring. Please, let's put our hands together for them as they sit down. So... We have put up all this, that this is just an introduction of what we are about doing in three phones. There are many ways to which you can plug in. So let's go to the next slide, and that will make you to be able to follow us. These are the places for, for, for standout. Some of, there are some schools that we visited before. I don't have the, I don't know, I vis, we visited um, Baptist, uh, Zion Baptist High School and uh, Gulf. Okay, we've not gone to Gulf for, to make presentation. We visited a lot of schools around, and from what we have at ESAP, you can, you can read this. When you visit our website, as you click on standout, you can see a lot of comments from the schools we visited. Let's move to the next slide because of our time. So I can say you can follow us. These are the contacts, www.3funds.org. On Facebook, this. We are presently doing something now, 3 funds that work week of expression. In this week, we have a lady. She's not here. She's a dentist. Her name is Dr. Adeshola Odofi. She's presently interacting with people on our, on our Facebook page now, telling, telling parents that don't push your children to help you achieve the vision that you fail to achieve. What you need to do is discover them. Know what is their strength. Know, know, know their, their weakness. I was reading a, a write-up write recently, and I saw that 
for you to amount to something in life, you have to discover your talents. Know what is that your passion and your interest. And from there, you can drive your education in that direction and to make it easier for you to follow your dream and your vision in life. I want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to me. And as we continue with the program, thank you for your patience. Thank you.